one basic thing is you think she's running around. But I really, that's yeah. really what it is. Yeah. Two short months after meeting through an online dating site, Byron and Wendy moved in together. And only two months later, they tied the knot. But now, after seven months of marriage, their rush to the altar has proven disastrous. He never lets me explain anything. He always tells me he doesn't want to hear excuses. I've been cheated on so many times, I see the warning signs. What was said in those 60 days that made you think I need to move this person in with me? With only seven months under their belt, Byron and Wendy have hit a wall. He shuts me off every time I try to speak. Well, yes, I see it as rationalizing and justifying. Today, on to Horse Court. Come to session the honorable judge lynn toller presiding good day ladies and gentlemen i'm here today with wendy smith and byron smith mr and mrs smith have been married for seven months they met each other nine months ago on the internet got married after two months and now seven months later we are in divorce court we have some financial matters that we need to resolve but before we do that I'm going to start with Mr. Smith. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this relationship and how we ended up in divorce court today? Well, Your Honor, you know, they say you should test the waters before you jump in and go swimming. So I jumped up off that high dive, hoping to do a swan dive, and I ended up belly flopping, Your Honor. <laughs> well, tell me how the two of you met online. What was the situation and what was getting said? Because it had to be pretty good. Well, I was going through looking at, at profiles, and I noticed all of her interests. And I was convinced right from the start that her interests matched mine perfectly. And so uh, we, I emailed her, I guess, about three or four times the same exact email. And finally, I got a response from her. I guess I caught her attention finally. You know, I kept throwing that line out and reeling it in. Well, what was that line? <laughs> it was my oh. lure. No, 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 no. What was what was the actual line, or can you not say it? Well, no, it, it was it was respectable. I just uh -huh. straight out, basically, just told her what I was looking for, and I noticed that her her interests interest were the was same. Her interests were similar to yours. Okay, and and it, nothing different. It seemed like compatibility. I got. Be there. And she answered. Then what happened? Well, uh, a couple couple months later, she moved in with me. was said in those 60 days that made you think I need to move this person in with me honesty I'm real high on honesty your honor how and do you know she's being honest when she's just trying she could have been a dude you don't know <laughs> <laughs> no no we I mean I'm not talking about you know what I mean but I'm saying you're on the other end of a computer he doesn't know who's there well, we, we met, she was sending pictures, we met, and uh, she uh -huh. talked about her kids and, and her exes, and it's, it, was, it was the real thing, I, yeah. and I knew it, I knew it from the, I knew it from the jump. Street. It was the real thing. So far, Mrs. Smith, is he telling me the story accurately? Basically. Okay. What made you comfortable enough to move in with him after only knowing him 60 days? Well, during those 60 days, we were on the phone for hours and hours at a time. Uh huh. Um, every day. And how long before you actually met physically in person? Um, was it two days? Two days? Oh, okay. So you were seeing each other most of those two months. Yes. So what happened after she moved in? I mean, it, it was the real thing, according yep. to you. What happened? Well, you, you know. We had an awesome sex life. I hate to do this on, on air, but our sex life, it was just off the chain. And, uh, you know, and, and I told her when we started discussing marriage that after marriage, things change. Well, now she says that it, I always think that I'm right about everything, but you unfortunately, do. I yeah. was right about it changing. I mean, to get a loving touch, it's like throwing putting out a fire with gasoline and i don't have to tell you the price of gasoline these days D did it dissipate slowly over time or did all of a sudden the sex life just stop well it's it's like she was losing interest you know it's uh maybe you shave every now and then <laughs> his face yes okay <laughs> There's new stuff going around that I've heard about, and I just making sure it wasn't that. 
<laughs> Got to give her something to yeah. appreciate when I do clean up. Mrs. Smith, have you lost interest him in him intimately? Not really. I mean, just it's when I'm in the mood. Yeah. And you're not in the mood as often anymore. No. Do uh, you he, know why? The less gentleman that he he's not anymore. He's not a gentleman anymore. No. What what what, no. what change? What he used to open car doors for me. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever we go to restaurants, he would open the door, pull out my chair, that kind of stuff. Now it's just Get out. casual. Yeah, yeah just. M Mr. Smith, is there any accuracy? I mean, and think about it. Could there be any accuracy to that statement? Yeah, I guess I guess there could be. I guess I, I've started taking a few things for granted. Like one thing. That she's mad about is that you won't use a handkerchief when you want to blow your nose. You just hold one side and <laughs> on the ground. Do you really do that? I've been a carpenter for almost 20 years, and that's the carpenter handkerchief. Women don't like that. <laughs> hey, let me, you know, here's what I have to say about intimacy. Intimacy for women is an all-day activity. You can't just start the car at the end of the night when you're ready to go. You have to have all day foreplay, and it doesn't take all day, but during the day, and I love you here, a touch on the neck here, a handhold there. It'll take you all of five minutes, but it has to happen throughout the day so she feels, I'm loved, I'm loved, I'm loved. Now I'm willing to love you back. That's how it works. It's not a law. When divorce court continues, does women something to hide from Byron. She takes the phone into the bathroom. I come out in, into the room that she's in and she'll close down the laptop lid. Is the ink on your marriage license barely dry but you're already ready to call it quits? Call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash with the case of Byron Smith, who fears Wendy, his wife of seven months, has been cheating on him. But can Wendy do anything to prove her loyalty to Byron? If you are jealous, if you have trust issues, no matter what she does, you're gonna find it distrustful because that's something that's going on in your head. Mrs. Smith, it seems that you're kind of closed off and shut down. And I want to know why that happened. Did something go wrong? I just haven't learned to speak my mind because he shuts me off every time I try to speak. Do you mean that he's controlling or he, he, he never lets you? He never lets me explain anything. He always tells me he doesn't want to hear excuses, no matter what it is. Can you give me an example of a conversation you were trying to have and he just, he just shut it down, put the brakes on it? Um, like whenever I picked him up from work one day, I was 10 minutes late and he started walking already. Uh huh. I was trying to tell him that, you know, traffic, it backed up in traffic. He didn't want to hear it. He was said, he you angry? should have left early. Well, I did. I left 40 minutes when it only takes 20 minutes to get there. Can't help traffic. Yeah. You know, Were you mad just, about that? I was, I was extremely mad because that was her day off uh -huh. and she wants to blame it on the traffic when it only takes 20 minutes to get from where I live to my job. Do you believe that she didn't, that, that she simply didn't leave on time? But you know, sometimes traffic is worse than others. If there's an accident, there's nothing you can do. I really think she was doing something that I wasn't supposed to know about because I would text her throughout the day and she wouldn't text me back. Speaking of text, like she tried no, to- No, I don't want to speak about text. I want to speak about her inability to speak because I really think she thinks she doesn't have the right to speak. And once a woman feels like that, you know, she's, she's kind of done. And so I'm trying to get to, to the root of the problem. Can you give me another example about when he said something to you or when you said something to him and you feel like you get shut down? Well, like whenever we're trying to go somewhere and driving, um, I'm going, I take back roads a lot, try to avoid traffic. He gets, he gets upset about that, but I try to explain my reasoning why I take the back roads. He doesn't want to hear it. You know, he never lets me explain anything. 
So if you don't do something exactly the way he wants you to do it, he gets angry he gets and doesn't want to hear it. Yeah. Now, is any of that ringing any bells? Is it at all moderate, at least? an accurate assessment of what goes on at your house. Well, yes, I see it as rationalizing and justifying but because I'll be trying to explain to her that what she's doing is, a, is annoying me or irritating me, and she goes off and starts giving excuses of why she's going to do it, why she's going to continue to do it when, instead of trying what to work of, on a what solution. What kind of stuff does she do that annoys you? Well, she takes the phone into the bathroom, with her, she say she spends almost thirty minutes in this bathroom. Oh, whatever. I come out, I come out of, into the room that she's in, and she'll close down the laptop lid or shut her phone off real fast. That's because well, I so finished what I was doing. So your basic thing is you think she's running around. Like I really, that's I, yeah. really what it is. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've been cheated on by every woman I've ever been with, so I'm, I understand I could have some trust issues here. Uh huh. But when we married, before we married, actually. We agreed we would never give the other one even reason to think it. So when I bring these up and she starts rationalizing and justifying why she's doing it and going to continue to do it, instead of saying, all right, well, let's work on a solution. Now, granted, she has stopped taking her, her phone into the bathroom with her, but she still, I walk into the bedroom, she's on, she's on it, texting. Yeah. And you, you, you know, first of all, women text a lot. Little, 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 we, 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 women text a lot. That's number one. And number two, if you are jealous, if you have trust issues, no matter what she does, you're going to find it distrustful because that's something that's going on in your head. And you can't, and she can't fix that. When divorce court continues, is Wendy coming up a little short on her vow to love, honor, and obey Byron? She told me she was uh, naturally submissive. Did you? Do you think you ought to know someone more than two months before you move in with them? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Wendy Smith, who says her husband Byron is too controlling. But is there any pleasing Byron? A lot of times it's because I'm sitting there trying to think of what you want to hear. Of what I want to hear. Exactly. So you don't get mad. I've been cheated on so many times, I see the warning signs. Communication stops secretly running around. I mean, she'll Give come me an home example late. where she secretly run, run around on you. She'll come home late from work. She gets off at 10 o'clock at night. Uh-huh. One night she didn't get home till 1.30 in the morning. Because I had inventory that night, and I told you about that before. Before that night. I Did had she have inventory you. that night? She, she calls me that same, like, 10 minutes before 10 o'clock and tells me she has to work late. To do inventory. That's what she told me. But I me. told you I had but inventory that day was, before I even went to work. There was no prior warning to this. I mean, it's just out of the blue. I have to, I have to work tonight. And now I've seen a married woman, and that's what she used to tell her husband. My husband has called me on many occasions, babe. I can't get the taxes to do, and I can't get them done. I won't be home till late. And he gets home when he gets home. I mean, that happens. People who have jobs sometimes have to work overtime. It, it, it's not an indication that she's cheating on you. Well, she told me she was uh, naturally submissive. So Did you? Yes. Are I mean, you? I'll, I do everything in my power to make him happy. So to me, that's naturally submissive. I, you know, whatever, if he doesn't like something, I don't do it. You know, it's like everything he wants, if that's, I'm tired of it. He always thinks he's right, so I try not to do it. Do, do you find that she's not as submissive as she suggested she was? Well, like she said, if, she, if I don't like it, she tries not to do it. Then why do we argue every time that I try and tell you something that I'm not liking? Well, give me something else that you don't like, because so far everything that you don't like has been silly. Well, <laughs> the, I guess the most thing I don't like is the lack of communication. I'll ask a question and I'll get, mm, or not even that, that much. 
What it's kind of like questions would she a, not answer? Almost any, like I should already know the answer. A lot of times it's because I'm sitting there trying to think of what you want to hear. Of what I want to hear. Exactly, yeah. so you don't get mad. I know what's happening at your house. I do. When divorce court continues, the question of the hour. You are leaving, are you not? from Mr. Smith, why don't you tell me why? Um, he is probation and court costs that I've been paying for the past three months. For him? Yes. And what's a, what, what was he on probation for? A DWI. You got a DWI, Mr. Smith? Yes, ma'am, I did. And is she paying off the court costs for you? Well, it came out of her bank account, but she keeps the budget and decides what bank account certain things come out of. Uh -huh. Like my, out of mine comes the rent and the electric and the internet out of hers, her personal business, and, and anything else. And, and your felonies. <laughs> uh, why did, did you decide to take the money for his, his probation fees out of your bank account? Was that a decision you made? Partially, maybe. Partially, maybe. Did he ask you to do it? Did you volunteer to do he, it? Yeah, he asked me to do it. He, um, we were taking overdrafts on his bank account to begin with, okay. and he didn't want to use his credit card or bank account to do this transaction mm -hmm. over the internet. Okay, let me tell you what happened to you guys. One of, number one, you married each other too soon. It's always fun the first 60 days. I mean, I'm sure Attila the Hun was a good time on a couple of dates, you know. Uh, you, it's always a good time in the beginning. You have to date people for a long time so that dating personality gets tired of showing up and the real guy shows or the real woman shows. And because because I get I could be, you know, joyful and, 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 and funny for, for, for 60 days. And you could take me home and find out I'm a nut. It just it's what that is. So that's the lesson that you've learned, Mrs. Smith. Mm -hmm. You are leaving. Are you not? I don't know. I'm going to talk to you, Mr. Smith. You're hurting her. You're whittling away at her. You're chipping away at her confidence. You're chipping away at her. That's why she doesn't want to be near, because she's, she's closed off, because she's, she's crumbled. And you're the one who's done that to her. If she wants to leave, you need to let her go. If she needs help leaving, you should help her to leave, because you, you think she's cheating. You think she's not good enough. Let her go. Don't beat up on her. Don't say, I didn't get what I wanted, and beat her up with it every day. Just let her go away if that's what she wants to do. Or deeper still, be a better man. Deeper still. <laughs> trust her. You should be able to trust her and, and, and not be afraid that she's going to hurt you because that's all fear and weakness in your head. And nothing to do with her. That's all you. <laughs> but don't make her feel like she's less than. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes, ma'am. Do, are you saying yes, man, because you want me to shut up? Or are you saying yes, <laughs> man, because you actually, in your heart, kind of feel what I'm telling you? I, I understand exactly what you're saying. You did it because you wanted to, Mrs. Smith. You gave him the $300 because that's how the economics worked out. So I can't give it back to you. But I want your dignity. I want your strength. Uh, and uh, I wish you the best. Thank you. you know, I'd leave him if I were you. But you take your strength back. It's a, it's a matter of drawing a line, because he can't respect a long line you didn't draw. Go ahead, draw a line. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. All right. When Byron and Wendy left divorce court, they decided to make an effort to save their quickie marriage and have put their divorce on hold. Wendy says Byron is less nitpicky, and Byron is happy to report